But if your brain waves slow a little bit more and they go down below 13, you get into an alpha brain wave pattern, which is 8 to 13 cycles per second. Your mind becomes much more focused. You really get drawn into whatever you're doing. Uh, you're in an alpha brainwave pattern. Alpha is also the brainwave pattern you're in when you're just falling asleep at night, but you're not quite asleep. Or you're just waking up in the morning, but you're not quite awake. You're not unconscious, but you're not quite awake. It's that little twilight state in between. Alpha is also the brainwave pattern of, of meditation. Almost all meditation is happening in an alpha state. Alpha is also associated very strongly with joy, peace, those kinds of feelings. Also in Alpha, people begin to have much greater feelings of connection and ease, relaxation. Here in Beta, people are, you know, when people lose their temper, that's a manifestation of Beta brainwave pattern. But when you get down into Alpha, you begin to develop called the relaxation response. You become more focused, you become more happy, you become more joyful. You feel more connected to things. And then, if your brain waves slow even more, you go into a theta brainwave pattern, which is between four and eight cycles per second. Theta is more of a visionary state. When you're uh, asleep at night and you're dreaming, you know, rapid eye movement sleep, you're in a theta brainwave pattern. So when people have visionary experiences, they're very often in very low alpha or, or in theta. It's what's called sleep theta and mystical theta, the brainwave patterns of many, many spiritual states Theta is also the brainwave pattern of creativity. When you put two divergent pieces of information together in a new way and you go, aha, and suddenly something that didn't make sense before makes sense, or you get an, a brand new idea, your brain makes bursts of theta waves. An outpouring of endorphins in your brain and you, and you really feel good. Advanced meditators generally spend most of their time in uh, alpha, and then they have these little excursions into theta, which start off just being momentary, and then uh, become uh, longer and longer. The deepest brainwave pattern is delta, which is four cycles per second and below. Delta is the brainwave pattern of dreamless sleep. You're also making delta waves right now that are responsible for managing your autonomic processes like breathing and your heart beating and things like that. When you meditate, the two sides of the brain synchronize or balance. Brain synchronization. When you are in a beta brainwave pattern, you feel very separate and the two hemispheres of the brain are very separate. One or the other hemisphere is very dominant over the other. If it's the left hemisphere that's dominant over the other, you will be a very objective type of person. Your attention is very objectively focused. You're focused on the outer world. Whereas if the right side of the brain is dominant, then you're very subjectively focused and very focused on the interior. If the brain is balanced, of course, then there's a balance between those, those two things. In beta, you, your brain is very lateralized. One or the other hemisphere is very dominant, and you 
feel a lot of feelings of separation. And the symptoms of, of separation are fear, anxiety, depression. As the brain waves begin to slow down, the two sides of the brain begin to communicate with each other more. And the more that that communication happens, the more that balance happens, the more you feel, the more you feel connected. in through the eyes, uh, it's actually waveform, uh, not actually three-dimensional cars and rooms and walls. Our brains do that. When information comes into the eye, it's upside down, it's backwards, and it's two-dimensional. What happens is the brain then takes the two sources of information coming through the eye. Each eye is given the same picture and it puts the two together to create a three-dimensional image. Well, that's what the brain's doing every time we look around. Television is possible because of something called Fourier transform. What these transforms allow is for a camera to take a picture of something that looks real turn it into waveform and broadcast it in waveform and the television then decodes the waveform back into pictures. What they've discovered in experiments with the brain is that the brain works in exactly the same way on Fourier transforms. The brain is a frequency decoder. It is taking frequency waveforms and turning them into pictures. And I wonder if there is any out here or whether it's all in here being projected as an illusion out here. This is not real. It's a hologram. It's a hologram.